The scariest thing about menopause isn't the hot flashes. It's what you've been told to believe for a couple of decades. Like the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz, estrogen's been cast as the villain in this menopause story for decades. But what if that story's all wrong? What if estrogen isn't the villain at all, but even the hero? For decades, women have been warned to fear the very hormone that's kept them healthy and strong and vibrant for most of their lives, most of your life. That fear still drives what many women and even many doctors believe to this day. Most people think they know the truth about menopause and hormones, but in this video, we're going to take a look at what you've actually been told. Myth number one is that estrogen is the villain. For more than 20 years, estrogen's been portrayed as the wicked witch of the West in menopause. It's been blamed for breast cancer, for heart attacks, for strokes, for blood clots, and even Alzheimer's disease. But the truth is exactly the opposite. It isn't estrogen that increases those risks. It's the loss of estrogen. When estradiol drops after menopause, arteries stiffen, bone density goes down, insulin resistance gets worse, the brain loses a layer of protection. Estrogen was never the villain in this story at all. It was the hero. It's been framed. If you're interested in seeing what the newer research really says about the risks and benefits of hormones for menopause, I'd invite you to check out The Menopause Solution. That's my masterclass that explains these studies without a bunch of medical jargon. It helps you clear up the confusion about what the science actually means for you, and it gives you the confidence to advocate for your own menopausal health. Learn all about the masterclass on my website at simplehormones.com optimal. Myth number two, progesterone is the accomplice. Well, if estrogen isn't to blame, then the next suspect must be progesterone, right? Well, that idea comes directly from early studies that kind of grouped all the hormones together. Those studies didn't even use real progesterone at all, though. They use something called medroxyprogesterone. It's a synthetic progestin that's totally different. Bioidentical progesterone, the exact molecule your ovaries once made, it supports calm sleep, it protects your brain, it balances estradiol's activity in the uterus and the breast tissue. Yet even today, the FDA-approved package inserts for progesterone products carry the same black box warning used for synthetic progestins. That warning cites the risks for breast cancer, heart attack, and stroke, even though those risks came entirely from progestin data, not from natural progesterone. The label keeps repeating the myth. Myth number three, you're too old to take hormones. Well, maybe your doctor's told you you can't take hormones after age 60 or 65 or wh whatever age that is. That idea comes from a misunderstanding of the older research. Those studies looked at women who started hormones when they were, on average, 63, often 10 or more years past menopause. At more than a decade past menopause, these women had already built up what's called plaque inside their arteries and their hearts. They had the early stages of heart disease. And while it's true that starting any hormone therapy 10 years late after menopause might stir up some old problems, especially when there are hidden clogged arteries, women who replace their hormones within a few years of menopause actually see lower risks for heart disease and death. Continuing hormones past 60 helps to protect your bones, your brain, and your heart. There's no magic birthday when hormones suddenly become unsafe. The key is your doctor understanding your individual risks, understanding how to approach those risks, not some arbitrary age cutoff. Myth number four, hormone therapy is only for symptom relief. While well, official guidelines and FDA warnings still treat hormone therapy as a short-term fix for severe hot flashes. That kind of thinking misses the entire point. Hormones aren't just about symptom control. They're also, maybe more importantly, about long-term protection. Optimal estradiol and progesterone help preserve bone density, support your brain and your heart health. They improve your metabolic function. When doctors limit hormones only to women with serious night sweats or hot flashes, they're basically ignoring decades of research showing the preventive benefits of optimal hormones. It's time to move beyond relief and toward prevention. Myth number five, bioidentical hormones are just marketing. 
Okay, so maybe the horse pea estrogen and the synthetic progestin used in early research was less than ideal. But all this business about bioidentical hormones being nothing more than marketing? That's simply false. The estradiol and progesterone available today are chemically identical to the hormones produced by the human body. Sure, the term bioidentical does have some baggage, I'll give you that. But using hormones that are exactly the same as what your body makes, that's a sound scientific principle. It just makes sense from uh, common sense. These hormones were either unavailable or barely used back in 2002. Whether those hormones come from an FDA-approved manufactured product like Estrace or Prometrium, or if they come from a compounding pharmacy and some type of compounded prescription, that's kind of a topic for another video. The point, though, is this. The hormones you lost are the very ones you need to put back, not something that's similar, close but no cigar. These are the five myths that keep estrogen and progesterone cast as the villains in the whole menopause drama. But when you look at the evidence, you realize they're actually the heroes of the story, and it's time to give them their redemption arc. So if the science is this clear, why do so many doctors still believe and perpetuate these myths? Well, I believe there's two main reasons for that. Number one, most doctors get almost no training about menopause and hormones. Surveys of medical schools and residency programs show that family practice and OBGYN residents receive, on average, less than two hours of menopause education during their entire training career. Two hours. That's not even enough time to cover a single hormone study, let alone the decades of research that have followed the initial studies 20, 25 years ago. Number two, the little training that doctors do get rarely includes the modern evidence about bioidentical estradiol and progesterone. Residents don't hear much about the studies of the last 20 years. There simply isn't time. Instead, they're briefed on older research, especially an influential but deeply flawed study from the early 2000s that painted all hormones with the same brush. The conclusions from that study were alarming, but they also stuck. So when a woman walks into her doctor's office asking about hormones, that doctor is operating from an outdated playbook. One that says hormones are dangerous, they're temporary, they're only for hot flashes. It's not that your doctor doesn't care. They simply haven't been given the updated information. They don't know how to separate myth from evidence. That's why these outdated beliefs still shape the care women receive today. And it's exactly why I make videos like this one. I'm trying to replace the confusion and fear with clarity and confidence. Let's pull back the curtain on that influential study I've mentioned that has changed everything. Back in the early 2000s, a massive research project, one of the biggest ever conducted, claimed to test the safety of hormone therapy for women. It dominated the headlines. Every news outlet ran the same story. Hormones cause cancer. Hormones cause heart attacks. Well, the fear spread pretty much instantly. Doctors pulled women off therapy overnight. Pharmacies couldn't keep up with the cancellations. But here's the twist. That study didn't really test what most people think it did. The women were, in the study, as I've mentioned, on average 63 years old, more than a decade past menopause. They weren't using the same hormones your body made for decades. They were given estrogen from horse urine and a synthetic progestin, not human estradiol and progesterone. In other words, it wasn't a study of modern hormone therapy at all. When researchers later looked more closely at the data, the women who started hormones earlier, even those non-bioidentical hormones, if they started them within a few years of menopause, they actually had lower risks for heart disease and death. But that part never made the evening news. That single flawed trial became the foundation for how medical schools, guidelines, and even the FDA have treated hormone therapy ever since, 23 years. That study had a name. It was called the Women's Health Initiative. It's taken more than 20 years to untangle the damage the WHI has caused. And in the meantime, millions of women have been left to suffer needlessly, fearing the very hormones that could have helped them stay healthy and strong all along. So where does that leave you? Well, if estrogen isn't as wicked as it's been made out to be, and the old research doesn't really tell the whole story, 
What's the real truth about hormones after menopause? Hormone replacement therapy is about estradiol or progesterone to relieve your symptoms. And that's great as far as it goes. It's a good start. But the real magic happens when we go a step further. And that is a step to optimizing all your hormones. I'm talking about the levels of all your hormones being not too high and not too low, but just right. Optimal hormone levels help keep your body strong, keep your mind sharp, your heart and your bones protected for decades to come. And that's the topic for my next video. The hormones you've lost at menopause are absolutely not the bad guys. Hormones aren't something to fear. They're actually the foundation for long-term health. They're not the only part of the foundation, but they are a key part of it. When you finally stop believing those myths, you can start feeling like yourself again. To gain even more clarity about what it means to move beyond menopause symptom relief and those myths, check out my next video.